Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are at the start of our journey here, learning about the AI 900, asking the most important question, which is what is the AI 900? So the Azure AI Fundamental Certification is for those seeking an ML role, such as AI engineer or data scientist, and the certification will demonstrate a person can define and understand Azure Cognitive Services, AI concepts, knowledge mining, responsible AI, basics of ML pipelines, classical ML models, auto ML, and Azure ML Studio. So you don't need to know super complicated uh, ML knowledge here, but definitely helps to get you through there. Um, but yeah, so this certification is generally referred to by its course code, the AI 900, and it's the natural path for the Azure AI engineer or Azure data scientist certification. And this generally is an easy course to pass. It's great for those new to cloud or ML related technology. Looking at our roadmap, you might be asking, okay, well, what are the paths and what should I learn? Uh, and so uh, here are my uh, markers and let's get out the annotation tool or laser pointer to see where we can go. Now, if you already have your AZ 900, uh, yeah, that's a great starting point before you take your AI 900. If you don't have your AZ-900, you can jump right into the AI-900, but I strongly recommend you go get that AZ-900 because it gives you uh, general uh, uh, general uh, foundational knowledge. And it's just an, another thing that you should not have to worry about, which is just how to use Azure at a fundamental level. Uh, do you need the DP-900 to take the AI-900? No, but a lot of people seem to like to go this route where they want to have that data foundation before they move on to, AI, uh, to the AI-900 because they know that that is just broad knowledge is going to be useful there. Uh, so, you know, it is a pairing that you see a lot of people getting the AI 900 and the DPI 900 together. For the AI 900, the path is a little bit more clear. It's either going to be data scientist or AI engineer. So AI engineer is just the cognitive services turned up to 11. You have to know how to use the AI services uh, in and out. For data scientists, it's more focused on uh, setting up actual pipelines and things like that within the Azure Machine Learning Studio. So you just have to decide which path is for you. The data scientist is definitely harder than the AI engineer. I think the code just was updated, so I just updated that to 102. Um, and I think the AI engineer used to be two separate, uh, you had to take two separate um, courses, but now it's just a single one. So it's unified. Uh, but you know, if you aren't ready for the data scientist, some people like taking the AI engineer first and then doing the data scientist. So this is kind of like a warm up. Again, it's not 100% necessary, but it's just uh, based on your personal uh, learning style. And a lot of times people like to take the data engineer after the data scientist just to round out their complete knowledge. Now, if you already have the uh, AZ 900 and the associate, you can safely go to the data scientist if you want to risk it. Um, because this one is really hard. So if you've passed the AZ-104, uh, you know, you're going to probably have a lot more confidence learning up about this stuff, all this fun foundational stuff at this level here. But of course, it's always recommended to go grab these uh, foundational certs because sometimes course materials just do not cover that information. And so the obvious stuff is going to get left out, okay? So moving forward here, so how long should you study to pass for the AI 900? Well, if you have one year's experience with Azure, you're looking at five hours, as little as five hours, could be up to 10 hours. If you have passed the AZ 900 to DP 900, around 10 hours is the average. If you're completely new to ML AI, you're looking at 15 hours. This could get extended to 20 to 30 hours. Again, it just depends on how green you are, like how new you are to these concepts. But you know, I think on average, we're looking at 15 hours. The recommended study time is 30 minutes a day for 14 days, should get you through it. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, just don't overstudy and just don't spend too little time, you know. Uh, so where do you take this exam? Well, you can take it in person at a test center or online from the convenience of your own home. So there's two uh, popular uh, test centers. There's PSI and Pearson View. Well, and I should say these are uh, um, there's these are uh, not necessarily test centers in, per se, but they are a collection of test centers that are partnered with PSI, Pearson View, so that you can easily take it at a local uh, test center. Have you ever heard the term proctored? That is That means a supervisor, a person that is monitoring uh, you while you're taking the exam. Generally, when we talk about online exams, they'll say proctored exams to refer to the online component. If I had the option between in-person and online, always the in-person because it's a controlled environment. It's way less stress, uh, 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 stress uh, stressful. Uh, and, um, you know, online, there can so many things can go wrong. So, you know, but it's up to your personal preference and your situation, okay? What does it take to pass the exam? Well, you got to watch the lectures 
and memorize the key information, do hands-on labs and follow along with your own Azure account. I would say that you could probably get away with just watching all the videos in this one without having to do. Uh, but again, it, you know, it really does reinforce that information if you do take the time there. There is some stuff that is in Azure Machine Learning Studio you might be wary of uh, launching because we do have to run instances and they will cost money. So if you, if you feel that you're not comfortable with that, just watching, you should be okay. But when you get into the associate tier, you absolutely, you just have to expect to pay something to, to learn and take that risk, okay? Uh, you want to do paid online practice exams that simulate the real exam. Uh, so I do have paid practice exams uh, uh, that accompany uh, this course that are on my platform exam pro. And that's how you can help support more of these uh, free courses. Can you pass this without taking practice exam? Azure is a little bit harder. If this is an AWS um, exam, I would say yes. For Azure, it's kind of risky. The AZ900, sure, AI900, DP900, SC900. No, I think you should uh, get a practice exam, at least one. Uh, or, or go through the sample one. There's a sample one uh, probably laying around for on the Azure website. Let's just look at the exam guide breakdown here very shortly. And then in the following video, we'll look at it in more detail. So uh, it's broken down into the following domain. So describe AI workloads and considerations, describe fundamental principles of machine learning on Azure, describe features of computer vision workloads on Azure, describe features of natural language processing workloads on Azure, describe features of conversational AI workloads on Azure. And I want you to notice it says describe, 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 describe. That's good because that tells you it's not gonna be super, super hard. Right. Um, uh, if you start seeing things that uh, say uh, beyond describe and identify, then you know it's going to be a bit harder. Okay. The passing grade here is uh, 700 out of a thousand, so that's around 70 uh, 70 percent. I always say around because you could possibly fail with 70 percent because these things work on scaled scoring. For response types, there's about 40 to 60 questions, and you can afford to get uh, 12 to 18 questions wrong. I put an asterisk there because there's not always just one question uh, um, per uh, like per section, but I'll talk about that here in a second. So some questions are worth more than one point. There's no penalty for wrong questions. Some questions cannot be skipped, and the format of questions can be multiple choice, multiple answer, drag and drop, hot area, case studies. Case studies, I don't remember, I don't think I saw a case study on mine, but case studies will have a series of questions um, a series of questions that uh, make up or come back to a particular business problem. And so those are, are very interesting. That's why we have that asterisk up here, okay? Uh, so for the duration, you get one hour. That means about one minute per question. The time for this exam is 60 minutes. Your seat time is 90 minutes. Seat time refers to the amount of time that you should take to allocate for that exam. So this includes time to review the instructions, read and accept the NDA, complete the exam and provide feedback at the end of the exam. This is gonna be valid for 24 months, up to two years before we do certification. And uh, you know, we'll proceed to the full exam guide now, okay?